Good evening. Tonight, I'd like to talk to you about the end of our combat mission in Iraq. Operation Iraqi Freedom is over, and the Iraqi people now have lead responsibility for the security of their country. Welcome to a special episode of West Wing Week, focused on the drawdown of U.S. forces in Iraq. All last week, we traveled through Kuwait and Iraq to give you a behind-the-scenes look at the extraordinary work that our men and women, both troops and civilians, are doing as we change our mission from Operation Iraqi Freedom to Operation New Dawn. Little bits of water. On Saturday, we take a C-130 cargo plane from Kuwait City to Baghdad International Airport. The aircraft included a small shipment of food moving in the opposite direction of the steady stream of troops and equipment in retrograde, the military term for the delivery home or redeployment of the tens of thousands of troops, vehicles, and incidental equipment currently in Iraq. This flight is the last one for the crew before they head home. On Sunday, we accompany Tim Lowry, a senior advisor from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, to a demonstration farm in Tarmia. Demonstration farms are used in conjunction with the Ministry of Agriculture to highlight to local farmers new methods so that the farmer, the local farmer, has something to see. He can see that his neighbor is achieving success with this new way of doing things. None of these are high tech, none of these are new, but they're new to this, this environment. Tim is part of a provincial reconstruction team, or PRT, which brings together civilian experts with Iraqi civilians in areas like agriculture, rule of law, public health, and education to build capacity for Iraqi governance systems. Members of the PRT tend to be pretty enthusiastic about their jobs. So that is good. Yeah. Very good. You know, it's just beautiful. What we're seeing here is one of the things that a demonstration farm has is a greenhouse. So our demonstration farmer recognized the value of that greenhouse and bought four more greenhouses with his own money. Now, what this says to the community is, this is, this is very valuable. I'm, I'm going to invest my own money in this. If you invest your money, whether, whatever it is, it becomes yours and you have a vested interest in it. The success of an operation like this depends on the PRT's ability to engage with the local folks. And one of the key responsibilities of the 50,000 troops remaining in Iraq is to assist in these efforts. Uh, yeah, our mission has uh, definitely shifted from conducting the combat operations to now where we're focusing on, um, you know, just continuing to help the Iraqi populace. Right here, our AO, 80% of the economy is based on agriculture. So the fact that we can come in here and impact them is really going to stimulate the economy, get people back to work. We're uh, working with uh, Department of State uh, personnel uh, to help uh, build the uh, infrastructure for the Iraqis. On Monday, we ventured out with another PRT to Umm al-Abid, a village on the Diyala River. This trip, we are accompanied by the Iraqi Federal Police, who are taking control of Iraqi security on the streets, already working missions like this one with Americans far in advance of the handover. The provincial reconstruction team has provided 16 area widows with three sheep each as an opportunity to enter Iraq's rising agriculture industry and supplement their incomes. We accompany veterinarian Dr. Jessica McCoy as she speaks to these women about caring for the sheep. This for me is a very rare opportunity that I get to meet with the women, and the women, they are the future of Iraq. Dr. McCoy then took a look at some of the female sheep to determine whether or not they're pregnant. This sheep is pregnant just because you can just see it. The Ward Shan Group is an organization that has been working with the PRT to bring improvements to the village. Sheikh Saad Hadi, the director of the group, talked about the needs of these women. On Tuesday, we helo over Baghdad to Joint Base Loyalty, 
a military installation housing both Americans and Iraqis. It is here that the 1st Battalion of the 41st Field Artillery Brigade trains Iraqi Federal Police, the nationwide force responsible for Iraqi security. This is the Federal Police Commando Course training. Uh, this was specifically requested by the commander of the Iraqi 1st Federal Police Division. He requested that we develop a program of instruction and produce two platoons of commandos uh, under direct control of his division headquarters. The uh, Shurda, which is uh, the Arabic word for police officer, uh, federal police officer, the Shurda behind me are the commando course trainees, the first iteration of them. Uh, they're more than capable. Uh, three nights ago, the group behind me actually detained two individuals uh, on a, uh, a short notice tip. They are about three days away from graduating and they're working on advanced urban raid tactics, techniques, and procedures. Uh, and today, specifically, they're going through advanced room clearing procedures. They're, they're a proficient, uh, tightly knit platoon uh, capable of doing complex maneuvers in an urban environment. Damn, that was perfect right there. We're uh, partnered with uh, the 1st Federal Police Division. I'm very optimistic uh, in, in my battalion's role as an advise and assist uh, task force here working with the 1st Federal Police. We combine the needs of the people with providing a service that, not that the U.S. is providing, but that the Federal Police are providing. So what we do is we have this, uh, we, we sat down with the commanders and we planned uh, for, for the duration of, of our time here in Iraq, we planned out a series of uh, medical events and humanitarian assistance type missions. And the Iraqi Federal Police have now seen the benefit of that and that it is sustainable and they have really taken the lead on this type of uh, approach. So it's gotten them back out into the community. They're recognized by the local uh, populace. They in turn have now received the trust and confidence of the populace. They feel like they are there in their best interest and they're more willing to provide information um, so that the insurgency uh, it's much more difficult for the insurgency to absorb into the community if the community is not going to tolerate it anymore. They're, they're tired of it. They're sick and tired of it. So I'm very encouraged about the future of the 1st Federal Police Division uh, in eastern Baghdad being able to uh, provide for the safety and the security of, of the people. Before even finishing the day's session, the Iraqi police trainees are ordered by their commander on a mission elsewhere. Although the official change of command happened at the end of the month, the reality is that the Iraqi forces have been keeping the peace for some time now. On Wednesday, we catch up with General Ray Odierno, the commander of U.S. forces in Iraq, on his way to the Iraqi Ministry of Defense. The general was honored with a ceremony attended by top Iraqi generals, the Minister of Defense, and an honor guard. I was honored by the ceremony conducted by the members of the Iraqi security forces today. They represent the discipline, and the determination of the Iraqi security forces. Hard work, dedication, and strong leadership have enabled the Iraqi security forces to make exponential progress and now assume full responsibility for the security of all the Iraqi people. For me personally, uh, it's sad to leave. I have a warm place in my heart for the people of Iraq, for their resiliency, uh, for their love of their country, and I've made some very strong friendships with many leaders, such as the Minister of Defense and many of the generals here who have sacrificed so much, and I will miss them dearly. On Thursday, we leave Iraq on a plane with dozens of troops returning to the United States. The soldiers, airmen, and sailors travel on to catch connecting flights home, but the millions of tons of equipment and vehicles no longer needed are staged in the Kuwaiti desert for cleaning, repair, and a voyage home to the United States or redeployment to Afghanistan. There was a time when we were getting into this lot alone 900 pieces a week. I think we're doing, the, doing good work, getting stuff back to the source of repair so it can eventually get reset for the Army, getting the stuff that the war fighters in Afghanistan need, get it back out there to them so they can continue on with their fight. Our, our geographical location makes it so easy for us to ship stuff in a way that makes sense. It doesn't have to cross the ocean. Um, necessarily. Uh, stuff can be flown to Afghanistan depending on what it is. It saves the taxpayers a lot of money. And it gets the stuff to the warfighter faster. 
because that's where our priorities are at this present moment. The port is the final point of departure for many of the men and women and their equipment headed home. The Navy and Coast Guard work together to keep the Army cargo ships laden with American gear safe and secure. It's just one example of different branches of our military working together to execute the mission safely and effectively. Uh, PSU is the Coast Guard Port Security Unit. This is what they are excellent at. But then, you know, when you get them outside of the continental United States, we're a little bit more versed being the Navy going international. So the two of us combined together, working with each other and taking both of our strengths has just made us a formidable team for sure. Every single piece of equipment, whether it be a Humvee or a personal computer, is carefully tracked from convoy to port. Nothing is left behind, nothing is unaccounted for. Two weeks ago, America's final combat brigade in Iraq, the Army's fourth striker brigade, journeyed home in the pre-dawn darkness. Thousands of soldiers and hundreds of vehicles made the trip from Baghdad, the last of them passing into Kuwait in the early morning hours. Over seven years before, American troops and coalition partners had fought their way across similar highways. But this time, no shots were fired. It was just a convoy of brave Americans making their way home. Thanks for watching the special edition of West Wing Week on the drawdown of U.S. forces in Iraq.